So, in exploring advanced architectural visualizations, our conversation will start primarily with layering and editing. Some of the primary tools that we're going to use are going to have to do with editing images and editing vector lines. So let's start in those two locations. So right here I have um, a file open in Photoshop and I also have a file that is in Illustrator. Now this is not going to be an Illustrator or Photoshop tutorial in terms of using the programs. Instead what we're going to do is to kind of understand the concept of a few important concepts. Uh, I would call them advanced concepts. So the first concept that we want to look on is layering and masking and just getting an idea of what that means in these two modes of editing, right? So first, let's look at what that means for editing pixels, right? So as we know, Photoshop is a raster editing or pixel editing application. And what I have here is a rendering. It's an image. And, um, well, this image has been rendered from a 3D program. And, of course, these are pixels. And if I zoom all the way in, you can see where you see the pixels, the individual pixels that make up this image. All right. Now, the basic concept of how a layer works, we probably know this already. If you have something that is on top of a particular layer, then that will show on top. So, for example, we can see here that so we see here that So we see where we have a layer here and if we have a layer on top which is that layer then it will show on top so in case in this particular case it's a sky so this sky layer is on top of this render layer very simple concept but that is the fundamental concept that we will be looking on for advanced techniques. Now, it's the very same thing when we look at the vector editing program. So in this case, we're going to look at Illustrator. And if I maximize that and look in my layers panel, we can see the very same thing. We can see where we have the base layer here. And then on top of that, we have the sky layer. So if I turn on the sky layer, then it's going to be on top because the sky layer is on top of the render layer. Same concept. Now, the layering especially starts to get interesting when you start to talk about cutting layers out. So, for example, it's very popular in architecture that we would have a particular layer. For example, it could be the layer of a silhouette or a person. And usually, either we would try to get a transparent image or we would try to cut um, the image out. And we would do that maybe using the, um, the lasso tool to actually go around and cut out this shape. Now, the more advanced way to use this method of layering is beginning to use what we call layer blending overlays, right? And that is where we find these options here. Now, layer blending is a little like layer opacity, except the transparency of the pixels are based on an algorithm so for example i could select um, this 
person silhouette layer which is right here and I have that layer now selected I could increase the opacity of this layer by changing the opacity value here and if I do that you can see where the image gets slightly transparent now that is all fine and dandy if that's the intention but the intention is for an image like this we would want to cut it out so the other more advanced way of looking at doing this kind of opacity um, manipulation with the layers is by using um, layer blend modes so for example right now the layer blend mode here is on normal but for example, if I put this to multiply, we start to see interesting things happen. Now, if I hover over the different layer transform modes, you will see different effects of the same layer. And all that's happening here is that this is just a simple algorithm. So for example, the multiply algorithm is saying, hey, wherever white is located in the current layer so remember my current layer is this which is the person silhouette and anywhere there is white so for example in these areas here it's going to show the layer below and that's just a simple algorithm that runs automatically the very same way that you can use another layer um, overlay that for example says anywhere there is black it shows the layer below and that is using the lighting layer and there are a couple others that we can use the screen layer does a similar thing but slightly different based on the color some of the most popular layer overlays that we'll use in architecture will be screen multiply and overlay so for this particular one this screen layer um, perhaps will do exactly what we need and we can see here that we didn't have to cut this object out instead we just use a layer overlay to tell the layer that hey wherever there are black pixels show me the layer below now as simple as this technique sounds we can use it to do some other interesting things for example let's look at a lens flare and lens flares are basically lighting effects that has been captured as images but the interesting thing about lens flares is that you can only show them on a black background so for example if i wanted to show a lens flare in this image perhaps where the sun is um, there is no way that i could go ahead and start to cut this image out so this would be the perfect application for using a layer overlay where I can change it now from normal to screen that automatically gets rid of um, all um, that automatically translate using the algorithm translates that anywhere there is black pixels show me the layer below and that's essentially what it is doing so if I zoom out now this lens flare looks as if it belongs in this image now the interesting thing with this kind of effect is that if we start to move this effect now so I'm going to take this lens flare and start to move it outside of the picture area you can see where the black comes into play and that is because um, where there is black it would display the layer below but there is no layer below so it will only show you black so when using this method, you will have to ensure that your image is directly on top of another layer. Now another interesting, another interesting thing to note is that this concept of layer blending exists for almost any 3D or 2D applications that exist on the computer.